Hi, I'm Becky from Let's Make Geek Stuff, and this is part two of my tutorial on how to make my simplified Mandalorian helmet out of inexpensive floor mats that you can buy at nearly any hardware store. In part one, we uh, did the foam crafting, and here in video two, we're gonna do the painting and install the T-Shield. These seam lines, unfortunately, are just part of building with foam, but we can minimize them. Uh, two things we can do is really fine grit sandpaper. Uh, we can go over some of these seams. Once I sand them out, I'm going to heat them up as hot as I can to try to seal the foam. When I've done all the sanding I want, I'm gonna heat seal this. This is process is much easier if you have a real heat gun. Since we're using our hot um, blow dryer today, we'll just be really patient with it. Um, you'll see the color of the foam, the top of the foam kind of change as the top coating kind of melts to seal the foam. It just makes it a lot better surface for painting. Now I want to fill any sort of divots that are in the helmet. I'm going to use Quick Seal as a bathroom caulk. It, um, it, once it dries, it's not that sandable. I mean a little bit, but not much. So I'm going to just be really careful with how I apply it. I have a little water in a bowl, a paper towel. I'm just going to apply it with my finger. And push it down into that crack. Get my finger wet. Kind of smooth it over. And then I'm going to use the paper towel to kind of clean up some of these edges. And then I'll go over it really lightly with my finger again to get a nice smooth finish like that. So I've cocked and filled in all the areas I want to do, so now I will let this dry overnight. With the sanding and the patching done, I'm ready to um, prime this and then paint it. I'm not going to go into great detail on that process, but I encourage you to check out my video, um, Painting Baby Yoda's Helmet. I'll link it below in the comments. It talks about all the different sort of primers and some of the different paint that you can use in painting your helmet. paint these ear details, I've just used painter tape and I'm doing um, several very light coats so it won't bleed under the tape. So to make this template, I've taken the pattern pieces from the mask, I've covered them with some uh, trace paper and I've drawn on where I'd like my template to be. Using my trace paper, I've now transferred the template to uh, thicker piece of paper. Using double back tape, I've taped around the edges of my template. And I'm gonna clean that up with scissors. Okay, I peeled off the double back tape and uh, taped it to my helmet. And now I'm going to do multiple very light coats of spray paint, probably three or four. Overall, I'm really happy with that. Why I chose this paint detail is because this is the simpler helmet without the cheek indentations. Having this sort of highlight kind of gives the impression that the cheek indentations are there. It just makes it look much more Mandalorian-esque. Um, I think I will maybe add one more little detail just for fun, just to kind of make it my own.
man. Painting's done and my final step is to add a tea shield to bring it all together. Normally I recommend these. This is half of a um, replacement grinder shield. I give more information about these in the instructions, but you'll see I only have half of one. It's not big enough to fit my um, pattern. And I'm assuming if you're a beginner, if you're just making this for Halloween or something, you're probably not going to want to spend $10 and order one of these off Amazon. So I thought, what else can we do that's inexpensive, readily available to everyone? And I came up with these. These are plastic index dividers. I bought them at Walmart for about a buck fifty. Um, let's try installing one of these and we'll see if it works. So now I'm going to trace on the pattern and cut it out. Before I glue in this T visor, I want to run the rotary tool over it one more time just to be sure I have a fresh surface of foam to glue on. I'm also going to sand one centimeter in around my T visor so that the glue will have something to stick to. I'm not going to stand the bottom though because that's not going to get glued in. That's going to be visible. I'm going to apply the contact cement one centimeter in around the opening, one centimeter in on the T shield. I'm going to be extra careful not to get any glue on the T shield where it will be visible because this glue will show. And one thing you have to keep in mind is contact cement will melt spray paint. So be very, very careful not to get any contact cement on top of a painted surface. One thing I forgot to do is mark the center of this because we're going to need to know where the top center of this is. So now that my glue is dried, I can go ahead and do that. Um, I'm just going to fold my pattern in half, lay it on top, mark that center line because that's, that's important. All the glue is dry and I'm ready to glue this in. I have my parchment paper again. And I really do think having parchment paper or wax paper or something to keep the glue from gluing before you're ready is critical. Now, inside we'll see this is the center seam and we're gonna be lining it up with the center mark I made on the visor. So I'm gonna put this parchment paper on either side Okay, I'm lining up that center notch with the center seam. Okay, press down. I'm going to take off one side. Now I'm only going to glue the top edge of this T visor at this point. So I'm just going to slowly walk it around. I'm eyeballing that half inch or one centimeter. We have the one side down. I'm going to pull out parchment paper from the other side. This is a little trickier when you're dealing with the grinding shields because they're just a denser material. This, this is going in a little easier than a grinding shield would. Okay, I'm just gonna press that down. All right, now, I'm gonna eyeball So I want this edge to line up right in here. Let me see if I can get an angle for you. I'm gonna pull that up a little. See, 
problem I'm having is this edge keeps flopping down. So now I have this edge glued in, and now this part I'm holding up with my finger, and I'm going to now press it down to look as even as I can. I'm going to stick some parchment paper because I don't want that part to glue yet. We're going to do the same thing on this edge. Okay, I want to line them up so they look even. Okay, that looks even. So now I'm gonna press that down. I'm doing this section now. Okay. And now with this hand, I'm just kind of bending this the way that I want it. Pressing that down. Gonna do the same thing with this side, kind of lining it up as I go. Pressing that down. You know, do I love it? You know, I think for a dollar fifty, it's not bad. I, if you were gonna, if you wanted this to be a lot nicer, if you're gonna go to a con or something, you probably want to spend the ten, fifteen bucks to get one of these. But really, for a dollar fifty, I think that looks pretty cool. One final step for this helmet, just to dampen the movement on my head, I'm going to glue some of this upholstery foam inside. This is just that foam you can buy to make out pillows and stuff out of. And I'm just going to use some hot glue on this. Thanks for watching this in-depth tutorial on how to make this simplified Mandalorian helmet. As always, this pattern is on my Etsy shop. I also have tutorials to make this more advanced Mandalorian helmet, as well as the Owl Mandalorian helmet and Fennec Shand and several other <laughs> cosplay helmets. Um, you'll find tutorials on my channel and patterns on my Etsy shop. Um, again, thanks for joining me and good luck on your crafting.